Plant Systematics Unit 3. So for contents, this topic can enumerate and describe the phylum of the kingdom fungi and also this explain and enumerate approaches used in classifying plants. It describes how plants are being classified in earlier year. It also explains how algae are being classified, appreciate importance of the plants in the society. So plant systematic is a science that includes encompasses traditional taxonomy. However, it, uh, its primary goal is to reconstruct the evolutionary history of the plant life. It divides plants into taxonomic group using a morphological, anatomical, embryonical, a chromosomal, and a chemical data. However, the science differs from straight taxonomy in that it expects the plants to evolve and documents that ev evolution. Determine phylogeny, the evolutionary history of a particular group, is the primary goal of systematics. Now let's talk about the fungi. So systematics of fungi, we have we have Chytridiomycota, our division of zoosporic organisms in kingdom fungi, informally known as chytrids or chytrids. The name is derived from the ancient Greek meaning little pot and it describes or describing the structure containing unreleased zoospores. The chytrids or chytrids are one of the earliest diverging fungal lineages and their membership in kingdom fungi is demonstrated with the chitin cell walls. A posterior whiplash flagellum, absorptive nutrition use of a glycogen as an energy storage compound and a synthesis of lysine by the amino acid or the dipic acid. When you see flagellum, mo na siyang katong kanang blue nga kanang uh, murag, murag buntot sa ch chytrids. So murag dara ang mag-occur ang absorption of nutrients or the nutrition na ginayus ni glycogen para of course mag-store og energy compound. Next, the very interesting, the rhizopods or mo siya ang bread molds. So the rhizopods or Stolonifer is commonly known as the black bread mold. Commonly namakita sa bread or pwede po siya sa rice. It is a member of and considered as the most important species in the genus Rhizopos. It is one of the common fungi in the world and has a global distribution although it is most commonly found in tropical and subtropical regions it is a commonly agent of decomposition of stored foods like other members of the genus Rhizopus the stolonifer grows rapidly mostly in indoor environments the zygomycetes are a related small group in the fungi kingdom and belonging to the phylum zygomycota. They also include the familiar bread mold or rhizopus stolonifer, which rapidly propagates on the surface of breads, fruits, and vegetables. Next is about the ascomycota. It is a phylum of the kingdom fungi that together with the Basidiomycota forms the subkingdom Dicaria. Its members are commonly known as the sac fungi or ascomycetes. It is a large phylum of fungi. So ascomycota, the defining features of this fungal group is the ascus, a microscopic sexual structures in which non-motile spores called as cospores are formed. However, some species of the as ascomita are sexual, meaning that they do not have sexual cycle and thus do not form ascae or as cospores. So here, as I mentioned, the basidiomycota, it is one of the large division that together with ascomycota constitute the subkingdom Dicaria or the often referred to as the higher fungi within the kingdom fungi. 
For more details for Basidio Maikota, here's a picture. Mani siya ang iyahang ampol na dali ang high fall union. Hada basidium or kining blue spot dali asa iyahang bottom. Ang iyahang flagellum na ginatawag na mycelium or haploid. Of course, the fruiting body. So again, Basidio Maikota or filamentous fungi composed of hyphae. Except for Basidio Maikota or the yeast. And reproduce sexually via formation of specialized club shape and cells called basidia that normally bear external meospores. The meospores are the usually four. These specialized spores are called basidiospores. However, kasagaran sa mga basidios mycota are obligate asexual reproducers. Now, the aims and philosophy of plant systematics. The plant systematics is the science, again, that includes an encompasses traditional taxonomy. However, its primary goal is to reconstruct the evolutionary history of the plant life. It divides plants into taxonomic group using morphological, anatomical, embryological, Chromosal and chemical data, history and development of plant systematics. The biological classification of plants stretches from the work of ancient Greek to a modern evolutionary biologist. As a field of science, plant systematics came into being only slowly early plant lore usually being treated as part of the studies of medicine. Now, the classification systems of plant systematics. The approaches of classifying plants includes first the class districts, the phenetics, and phyletics. First, the class districts. So, the class districts is a method of hypothesizing relationships among organisms. In other words, a method of reconstructing evolutionary trees. So, related siya or pagkapares yun sila sa cladogram. You familiar? The basis of class district analysis is a data of the the characters or trait of the organisms in which we are interested. So, cladistics produce hypotheses about the relationships of organisms in a way that, unlike other systems, predicts properties of the organisms. This can be especially important in case when particular genes or biological compounds are being sought. Example here are the reptiles, fishes, and birds can be an example of class districts because they have a common ancestors in the past and evolution resulted in difference among them. Next, the phonetics. So, a phonetics relating to a taxonomic analysis that emphasizes the overall similarities of characteristics among biological taxa without regard the phylogenetic relationships. So, aphenetics, also known as the numerical taxonomy, was introduced in the 1950s. Phenetics attempts to group species into higher taxa based on overall similarities, usually a morphology or other observable traits. So, example, ang wolf o dog. Uh, most of the example um same sila ang genus then look phonetically more alike than do a wolf and a dolphin which are in the same class in contrast to the phylogenetic principle nothing needs to be known about evolution in order for species to be classified phonetically next the phyletics so here, um, examples of picture natin, taxon 1, taxon 2, taxon 3. Taxon 1, kita tawag na monophyletic. Taxon 2, the polyphyletic. Taxon 3, paraphyletic. So a phyletic or alluring to the evolutionary change in a single line of a descent without branching. So a phyletic lineage is unbroken series of species arranged in ancestors to descendant sequence with each large species having evolved from the one which immediately preceded its phyletic lineage 
is important for us. First, because it provides us connecting link between the present day organisms and their remote past ancestors. It also shows the unbroken series of species arrangement. The History of Plant Systematic Studies the history of plant systematics, the biological history usually being treated as part of the studies of medicine. The work of ancient Greek to the modern evolutionary biologist. As a field of science, the plant systematics came into being only slowly early plant, more usually being treated as part of the studies of medicine. The word systematics is derived from the Latin word systema, which means systematic arrangements of organisms. By Linnaeus use systema nature as the title of his book. Right from Aristotle to Linnaeus, every systematic employed limited number of a trait for classifications of organisms. The plant diversity. So kingdom plantae includes all the plants, they are eukaryotic, multicellular, and autotrophic organisms. The plant cell contains a rigid cell wall. Our plants have chloroplasts and chlorophyll pigment which required for photosynthesis. Now the characteristics of kingdom plantae. A plants contain a photosynthetic pigments called chlorophyll present in the plastids. They have different organelles for anchorage, reproduction, support, and photosynthesis. They reproduce asexually by vegetative propagations or asexually. These are multicellular eukaryotes. The plant cell contains the outer cell and the large central vacuole. So when we say plant cells, the eukaryotes, they have a cell wall. Also, of course, they have a large vacuole. Different from prokaryotes, which is ang gagmay lang ilang vacuoles. The reason why nga nung um, large or dagko ang vacuoles sa plants or sa eukaryotes, because of course, plants man sila, it's given na water jute ang, ang dapat na asasulod, which is the large vacuoles. They are non-motile. They make their own food and hence they are called autotrophs. Now, the kingdom plantae is broadly Composed of four evolutionary related groups. First, the bryophytes or the mosses, seedless vascular plants. Second, the gymnosperm, cone bearing seed plants, and angiosperm. The plant kingdom has been classified into five subgroups. First, the talophyta or talophytes. So, a polyphytes are a polyphyletic group of a non-mobile organisms that are grouped together on the basis of similarity of characteristics but do not a common ancestors they were formally categorized as sub-kingdom of kingdom plantae these include lichens algae fungus bacteria and slimes mold next the pteridophyta a pteridophyte is a vascular plant. So, we see vascular plants, katotong nai, xylem and nai fluid. Xylem for water and then phloem for food or sugar that disperses spores because pteridophytes produce neither flowers nor seeds. They are sometimes referred to as cryptogams, meaning that their means of reproduction is hidden. Ferns, horse tiles are often treated as a ferns, and lycophytes or a club mosses, spike mosses, and quillworts are all pteridophytes. However, they do not form a monophyletic group because ferns or and horse tiles are more closely related to a seed plant that, than to lycophytes. The bryophyta. The bryophyta are proposed taxonomic division containing three groups of non-vascular land plants. The embryophytes or the leafworts, hornworts, and mosses. Bryophyta consists of mosses only. So mosses, wala sila katong xylem, phloem. They are characteristically limited in size and prefer moist habitats, although they can survive drier environment. Next, the gymnosperms. The name is based on the 
and enclosed conditions of their seeds called ovules and their unfertilized state. The non-encased condition of their seeds contrasts with the seeds and the ovules of flowering plants or angiosperms, which are enclosed within an ovary, any vascular plant that produces by means of an exposed seed or of you like angiosperm or flowering plants whose seeds are enclosed by mature ovaries or fruits. Next, angiosperms. Angiosperms are plants that produce flowers and bear their seeds in the fruit. In fruit, they are largest and most diverse group within the kingdom plantae. Examples of grains including rice, corn, and wheat are also examples of angiosperm. In these plants, the pollination process is carried out by the wind. Other examples of angiosperms include roses, lilies, broccoli, and other eggplant tomatoes, peppers, and etc. Now the introductions to algae. Algae are an extremely diverse group of organisms that can be found in almost every ecosystem of the planet on the planet and they play an essential role for life on earth. They are little biofactories that use the process of photosynthesis to create a chemical compounds that we can utilize food for food, feed, medicines and even energy. Algae also provide much of oxygen here in Earth, serve as the food base for almost all aquatic life, and provide food and industrial products including petroleum products. Their photosynthetic pigments are more varied than those of plants and their cells have features not found among the plants and animals. After algae, we have the cyanobacteria. So the cyanobacteria should not produce of toxins that can be affected various parts of the body. Different species of cyanobacteria can produce toxins that can damage the liver or the hepatotoxins, affect the central nervous systems, and produce toxic alkaloids that affect the renal system and gastrointestinal tract. And also the cyanobacteria Blooms can steal the oxygen and nutrients that other organisms need to live, making toxins called cyanotoxins. While killing cyanotoxins are among the most powerful nature poisons known. They can make people, their pets, and other animals sick or even die. So that's why very dangerous at the same time. The Glaucophyta. The glycophyta or glycophytes are basically unicellular and naked flagellate or the cyanophora or a coccoid with cellulosic or mucilage covering. They are pre-produced of bi bi binary fusions, zoospores or endspores. Sexual reproduction is known Flagellate cells possesses heterodynamic anterior and posterior flagella. The glycophytes, also known as glycocystophytes or glycocystidids, my God, are a small group of unicellular algae are found in fresh waters and moist terrestrial environments. Less common today. They were during the Proterozoic. Next, the Rhodophyta. Rhodophyta or yung natawag siya na red algae. So, ang red algae have a valuable role in producing oxygen in the seawater. Various species of red algae are a source of food for many aquatic organisms like fishes, worms, and etc. But only this certain algal Species are responsible for the formations of tropical reef, red algae, or so nga no red man ang rhodophyta. Nagtawag siya na red algae, this is because the presence of the pigment, physoretin, kinin na pigment, nag-reflect siya og red light, and also absorb blue light. Next is the chlorophyta or the prasinophyta. 
It is a taxon of green algae, informally called chlorophytes. The name is used in two very different senses. So care is needed to determine the use by a particular author. So the chlorophytes, because of their photosynthetic activity, they made them one of the most important producers in the ecosystem. They are the major source of the starch and oxygen as a byproduct of photosynthesis. They serve as food for many heterotrophs. Many of them form symbiotic relationships with other groups of organisms. Heterocontophyta. So the heterocontophyta or heterocons are group of protists or formally referred to as heteroconta, heteroconte, or heterocontophyta. The group is a major line of eukaryotes. Most are algae ranging from the giant multicellular to the unicellular diatoms, which are primarily component of a plankton. Stramenophiles, also known as heterocons, usually have flagellate stage in the life cycle that has characteristics type of stiff tubular hairs arranged in two rows on one flagellum, these flagellate swims in the directions the hair-bearing flagellum is pointing. Stramenophiles are eukaryotes. Since they are neither fungi animals nor plants, they are classified as protists. Most stramenophiles are single-celled but are some multicellular algae including some brown algae. Next, the dinophyta. Dinoflagellates. Divisions or phylum Phryropyta are a group of primary unicellular organisms united by a suite of unique characteristics including the flagellar insert insertion, pigmentations, organelles, and features of the nucleus that distinguishes them from other group. Dinoflagellates are best known for the red tides. They can produce some of which involve the productions of toxins that can be impact human wealth through respiratory irritation or even the bioaccumulations of lethal concentrations in tainted shellfish. The haptophyta. The haptophyta, like other chromalveolates, Haptophytes contains a secondary plastids derived from a red algal endosymbiont with a chlorophyll as the principal photopigment. photopigment. Despite their biological importance, genome scale data have only now started to emerge. Haptophytes are increasingly recognized as a key component of the global marine phytoplankton community and play important roles both as a primary producers as bacterials and protist grazers contributing to the microbial loop the cryptophyta the cryptomonads or the cryptophytes are a group of algae most of which have plastids. They are common in fresh waters and also occur in marine and brackfish habitats. In size and flattened in shape with anterior groove of pocket at the edge of the pocket, there are typical two slightly unequal flagella. So a cryptophyta as a photosynthetic organisms, they contribute to a carbon dioxide fixations and as a non-toxic planktonic flagellates, they contribute important prey in the food chain. In the phagotrophic members of the group which eat bacteria or other protists, the crypt is typically lined with the trichocyst and bacteria-like bodies, trichocyst expel poisons which subdue and kill the microbial prey.